So good morning, good afternoon everybody. My name is Ian Gillett from IGR and uh, we are here today with uh, Tormod uh, Larson from uh, Externet Systems, who I'll introduce in a minute. Um, the interview we're doing today is as part of our research with uh, Connected Real Estate Magazine, looking at the in-building wireless ecosystem. Um, so without further ado, Tormod, who's the uh, CTO of Externet Systems, uh, I'll hand over to you. What do you do um, and what does Externet do? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Ian. Uh, yeah, my name is Tormod Larson. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Xnet Systems. Uh, Xnet is the, a leading provider of converged um, communication infrastructure, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Uh, we've been building uh, small cells and distributed networks, uh, both indoor and outdoor, for uh, you know 15 years now. Uh, and obviously really busy with uh, all of the new technologies like 5G that's uh, coming to the market. Okay, great. So specifically, I know you do outdoor small cells as well as indoor uh, systems as well. So specifically on, on the in-building space, what does Exonet offer there? Yeah, so um, it's traditionally been, uh, you know, cellular uh, coverage and capacity solutions. Um, more and more, uh, you know, things are happening, it's, it's converging, and we're looking at the indoor market not only being from a seller perspective, but uh, we also actually acquired a, a fiber company uh, back in September. So we're providing um, gigabit Ethernet services inside the buildings as well, uh, wireless service for all of the various carriers, and obviously now with uh, CBRS coming up as well, we see a lot of opportunities for private LTE networks as well um, inside buildings. Okay, good. So um, uh, this report we're doing is all about the ecosystem. Obviously, uh, I don't think uh, you personally going out, putting out all these systems in and pulling fiber and things. So as you deploy a system in a building, what sort of partners do you have? Um, and how do you, you know, kind of step us through the process here of, of how you would approach a building uh, for a wireless system, who does what and where Exonet fits in that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, our role is to um, deploy, own and operate the networks for the most part. Um, you know, a lot of uh, people will call us a neutral host. Uh, we are basically bringing all these capabilities together uh, for our customers or actually in, a, in the case of a, a building, uh, we might have multiple customers leveraging the same infrastructure. Um, so we are kind of that consolidator, you know, kind of converging all of, of the, the needs together, um, designing that, owning and operating it, and providing service to other being the um, mobile network operators, which is part of that ecosystem. Um, it could be the, the building owner, um, property owner, and the enterprise, which is kind of the beneficiaries of that. And then the, the companies that work with us is uh, both the technology providers, you know, equipment vendors, um, other that being DAS vendors. More and more, we also see, you know, small cell providers, the Ericsson, Nokia, Spider class of the world. Um, and then um, installation companies, system integrators that, to your point, are out there um, installing it on our behalf. And then we also have an ecosystem that help us uh, operate the networks over time. Um, same thing, break, fix, and all that. Um, we have a, a network operating center, so we're doing that, uh, but we are dispatching those type of resources on site. Okay, so you would do the design of the system initially, um, so decide which OEM to use, uh, recommend them to the building owner, I assume, and then get the installation and then operate for the years afterward? Uh, correct. And, and what we also look at is, you know, how do we, when we, it's obviously expensive to put in um, this infrastructure. So we, we really looking kind of into the future. How do we make sure that that architecture is compatible with future needs as well? Um, so yes, we select either a DAS vendor or a small cell vendor, but that's just a small portion of it. We're also looking at the fiber backbone, making sure that we could um, leverage that for other um, solutions in the future and power is another big aspect of that distributed network that we put into the building. Right. 
Yeah, everybody forgets about power, and that's the one thing that uh, you do need. So, um, so looking at the larger picture here, how, how do you view the overall opportunity uh, for in-building wireless? And you've mentioned 5G, you've mentioned CBRS. So uh, do you see those expanding the opportunity here from where we are today? Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the, the traditional uh, stats that everybody throws out there is that, you know, over 80% of all um, mobile um, calls or, or sessions are either initiated or terminated inside a building. Obviously, with both 5G and CBRS, it's not only about smartphones anymore. It's about a lot of um, internet of things and um, different uh, things that are connected to the network that might not be as mobile as, <laughs> as, as we are. Um, so we clearly see that um, as a, a huge opportunity and a huge need. Um, with 5G as well, we have other aspects to it as pertains to the frequency bands used and so forth that increase the need for uh, dedicated indoor systems. Um, so uh, you look at the projects you've done, or you look at a building, right? How do you define a successful uh, project? When you look at a building and say, yeah, we did a really good job on that. What, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I would say that obviously the, 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 the way we look at success is the more customers uh, that we have on that network, um, it's, it's one um, success criteria. Uh, that means that um, the building that we decided to make an investment in had a value to a number of customers. Uh, and then looking at the, the performance, you know, how much data is flowing through it and, you know, a lot of times where you get good data for that is, is like stadiums and Super Bowl and you see kind of the, the increase that are happening there. Um, and you know, some of that is, is kind of customer satisfaction, right? That's what at the end of the day, what we try to do is how do we provide um, solutions that the end users like and, 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 and uh, you know, create value to either the enterprise that's in there or just the individual using the service. But, that's how we typically see it uh, because we're, um, you know, again, our customers are other businesses. So sometimes it's hard for us to get maybe down to that granular level, but um, that's kind of how we look at it. Right. So you said uh, when we invest in a building, right? So you're looking at the opportunity and say, okay, I've got a class A office building here. Let's say it's uh, 20 floors, terrible cellular service. Um, I've got tenants on each floor. You're going to look at that building, build a system, and then how do you how do you monetize that um, with the carriers or with the with the building owner or with the tenants within that building? Yeah, again, this is back to you know our mission as a company. Uh, you know, we provide converged network infrastructure, so we're not looking at um, monetizing that from a single customer or even single customer segment. So um, maybe back to your previous question about what success, you know, if we could get contribution both from the mobile network operators, uh, property owner and enterprise, that's really um, a success, you know, from a business perspective for us, because then we've really been able to leverage that uh, uh, network real estate. You know, we are really in a real estate business to some degree. Um, and maybe your follow up question, I'm maybe taking your, job here, but um, what is those services, right? For a mobile network operator is typically, you know, uh, extending their um, mobile connectivity into those uh, facilities. For a building owner, that could be a piece of it, but they also have other needs like connecting their building management system, their security systems, maybe Wi-Fi uh, and so forth. You're an enterprise, um, they have traditional internet broadband, you know, uh, needs. Um, but we start seeing opportunities where they might be willing to pay for um, mobile, uh, you know, connectivity. And certainly with CBRS and kind of more of a cloud mindset, we also see more private networks uh, on top of our fiber infrastructure in there for both the enterprise and, and, and the building on. Right, so does that make sense? So you're providing a service inside the building on, for the carrier, extend their, their networks inside, and obviously yeah. 
the benefit of that. And then also, because the wireless network's there, the building can use that for IoT, smart building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you kind of hit, hit uh, two needs at the same time, right? Yeah, and, and you have obviously the, the wireless portion of that network, but it's a lot of wires to make things wireless. Um, and you know, we're looking at how we, we leverage that wire, right? The glass, the fiber, and like I also mentioned, the, the power distribution that is needed to you know, power a small cell could also help power um, a camera or you know, a detector in there. Yeah, a lot of people forget that uh, the majority of a wireless network is actually wired. So the last little piece at the end is wireless. Um, so um, let's talk about the challenges. Obviously, we talked about the opportunity here. As you look ahead, so what are the challenges you see in the market, how that relates to Extranet, and then how you see addressing those um, you know, for the next few years? What do you see that's going to come and uh, cause us some problems? Yeah, no, uh, it, interesting enough, the, the indoor market, if you look at from a, a pure mobility perspective, um, I've, I've faced some challenges uh, just over the last uh, couple of years. Um, it's a very fragmented market. Um, you know, a building owner is not a building owner. You're in different um, market verticals. You're in different uh, markets, um, certainly from a a, a mobile operator perspective, they have limited amount of, of capital and it's hard when you're looking at a isolated building, how, how was the business case there relative to um, a lot of the other builds they have. Um, so kind of making up to that priority level. Um, and with that fragmentation is how do you start creating some scale and consistency around it? Uh, it's been a challenge and that one element of that is from a like I said, building and market level, but also between the various carriers, you know? So if you're gonna build a network that you're gonna support multiple customers, how do you build a network that kind of accommodate all that? Um, and then on the business side of it, who's funding it? it is it the carriers that are, you know, the, the, the main uh, source of, of monetization or is it like I've described before, them plus the building owner plus the enterprise? And having those models kind of come together um, and then we're changing technology, like we mentioned, 5G, CBRS, all that. So it's a lot of confusion in the market and that sometimes stop innovation rather than, you know, spur it. It's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so I think, you know, bringing some of that clarity to it um, and driving more standardization, um, more scale, um, that's certainly how we look at it. Um, part of it has been in the past, a lot of indoor networks being distributed antenna systems. Um, very expensive to deploy, um, you know, highly uh, specialized skill on the RF side, you know, would, and a lot of coaxial cable that can't be leveraged for anything else. Um, and that fit for large facilities. Um, but we're looking at millions and millions of, you know, that next tier of buildings, and that might not be the right technology. So that transition is, is a little bit what the market is going through and then kind of put the 5G and CBRS on top of it, which I explain as opportunities, but it's also, to my point, creating some confusion in the marketplace. So that transition of the technology, that's where you're talking about the move to more fiber in the building um, to get the capacity, scalability, future-proof, if you like. Yes. Uh, absolutely, and you know, uh, without getting too technical about it, but you know, with 5G and we even saw it in 4G, you know, you have uh, more sophisticated uh, radio tech, uh, techniques used, uh, everything from MIMO to um, uh, various type of, of uh, beam forming and, and those type of things. And through a traditional DAS system, that's very costly and difficult to do. Um, so pushing more of that intelligence and more of that capability to the edge of the network require fiber to the edge, most probably more small cell type technologies, which look also more like Wi-Fi, and now we get more consistency um, around it. And since now we are on fiber and it's kind of ethernet traffic on, on the wired side, we also have other opportunities to put on that same backbone. Right, right. So it's one integrated network within the building that provides wireless service as well as all the other things the building can need as well. 
Uh, absolutely, and, and back to kind of the simplifying it or, or, or kind of get to that point and, and try to reduce the confusion. Um, when you talk to a building owner, I kind of say a lot of times is, uh, do you believe that it will flow more data through your building you know, a month from now or two years from now or five years from now than do today and 100% of them say yes, right? They just look around and people are on their phone and on their laptops and everything there and you know, more bandwidth uh, intensive application use like we're doing here, right? With, with uh, video conferencing and so forth. Um, and then second question, do you think it will be more devices connected in your building you know, a month from now, a year from now, five years from now, and same answer, yes. So now is question, do you think your building is prepared for it? Does it have the infrastructure to support that hockey stick of bandwidth and devices? And most of them are not, right? And so the fundamental is how do I have a backbone infrastructure that could handle, um, all of that you know, aggregated traffic. And then how do I have enough on-ramps to that network, which is because of all of the different devices out there. And that's just a little bit of you know, our philosophy of how we look at building that network for the future. We're building it today. Yep, so um, think about some of the buildings you've been involved in recently. Um, what do you think is one of the most unusual, um, but yet one of the, that's a good example of what of what you're talking about here. If you what springs to mind is like, hey, this is a this is a good example of what we can do. That's a good uh, good question. Um, you know, I, I I see some of the stuff that start coming up right now, um, which I initially thought was more my kids that was um, interested in. You know, virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, you know. I was thinking about gaming and stuff like that, but we see more and more of our customers that are interested in that um, and actually in really interesting venues. You know, initially we have some of those uh, things going on in sports and entertainment. You kind of see kind of the, the um, uh, relationship there. Um, but we also have that in commercial real estate buildings um, where they have, uh, maybe certain areas that, you know, really tall, um, prominent buildings uh, where, you know, they want to use that as, as part of more of the tourist part of, of their um, operation. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't kind of see that coming. And, and that's, uh, that's pretty interesting of when the network is there, how could it be used? It, it's funny you should say that because yesterday I was having a discussion with a friend of mine um, at the gym, and uh, he's a technology guy, but he's not in wireless, and he's like, well, what are we gonna do with 5G? And I said, you know, think of augmented reality, virtual reality gaming for your kid playing like the next generation of Fortnite or something, and he got that, and I was like, okay, now, think what you could do with that in an industrial or a commercial uh, space with uh, mo monitoring maintenance, remote uh, diagnostics of different things, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's interesting you bring up that. Everybody jumps on the sports and entertainment sitting in the stadium watching these things, but you take that core capability, there's lots of other things to do with it. Yeah, we, we even seen that, you know, like we said, in, in uh, industrial, uh, where they use that for in, uh, in warehouses to pick um, the materials. And, and you have kind of these glasses that help you with, with, with information and, and, and just be more efficient in the workflow. So yeah, it, it's a, a lot of, of those nuances that we haven't thought about and um, really you know, create a different type of value than just a subscription type of a, a monetization on the end user side of it. So uh, certainly 5G and, and some of these private LTE networks uh, on CBRS, I think gonna transform how we look at the end user monetization and the value that's created by the, the networks and the infrastructure behind it. Right, good. Okay, so my last question, uh, it's the easy one. Um, what keeps you awake at night? Uh, apart from the weather in Chicago recently, and that's where you live, so, um, but what is it that worries you most about the industry where we are today? 
that if we don't address it, could come back in a couple of years and really hurt us. And we'll say, you know, darn it, I wish we'd done that in 2019. Then we wouldn't be placing, facing this problem. What would it be? Oh, that's a, you said it was an easy question. I thought it was actually the hardest question. Um, you know, number one, I actually sleep pretty well at night. So, so might, that might be, uh, be it. But uh, no, I, I think a little bit of, um, you know, what I er uh, said earlier uh, in terms of um, some of these opportunities are creating some confusion. And sometimes you get a little bit of, um, I was maybe a, 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 you, you go in different directions um, independently and to really kind of be able to, to build out these networks, you need to start looking at it more holistically. Um, and um, specifically as we, what we've been talking for most of this today is, is indoor. Um, I think to, to really kind of bring that technology and, and, and these things to, to, to market and take advantage of it, you need to have a more holistic view of it. And if we're not able to get out of kind of that mindset, um, I think we'll still sitting and talking about, you know, what it could have been. Um, and we've seen this for small sales for, for, for a long time where, you know, we have had network operators that had really lofty, um, you know, goals and, and plans, but um, the plan to really kind of put it in place from a practical perspective and um, really kind of balance that with kind of the technology because it is very, um, you know, with as densification continue, you know, you need to kind of have a practical perspective and looking at, okay, what does this mean, you know, to then, you know, the building in itself, you know, how could I put in thousands of small cells in a building, you know, that's just not that, the, you know, you have the actual small cell, but the, the wiring and all that, and how does all that kind of come together, um, need a, a more of a collaboration uh, throughout the industry. And obviously that's what we try to, to accommodate. Um, but that, that's certainly, uh, I think a little bit of this is um, more of that will be uh, critical. Otherwise we'll, we'll not be as successful as the industry as we can be. Yeah, that's good. I think I agree with you. I think there's a lot of, um, certainly there's a lot of hype around state of 5G and things like this. And the fact that, you know, consumer reads, you know, the newspaper, watches the news online, it's just everywhere without really understanding what it is. And uh, you could believe A, it's here today, and B, it's going to solve all problems known to man. And of course, it's going to take some time. And to your point, we're going to have to think about carefully what we're going to do in the future and make sure we've got the infrastructure there today. So, yeah. Well, uh, Toma, thank you very much for your time today. This is good. Uh, we've been speaking with Toma Larson, who's the CTO of Extanet Systems. And uh, this interview today is part of the research we're doing with Connected Real Estate Magazine, looking at the uh, in-building wireless ecosystem. So, Toma, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.